Dear friends of Mozart, a warm welcome on behalf of the entire Salzburg Mozarteum Foundation. For more than 175 years, it has been our mission to introduce all people and generations to Mozart's music, his multifaceted life and his fascinating personality. You find us here in the historical rooms of our library, the so-called Bibliotheca Mozartiana. It is our pleasure to present you a Mozart letter that has acquired by the Foundation just a few weeks ago. Thank you, Andreas Wackert Geier. In front of us, we have an original letter by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart to his wife Constanze, written in Prague on Good Friday, 1789. Incidentally, Good Friday fell then, as it does today, on April 10. The letter was written during a journey to Dresden, Leipzig and Berlin that Mozart undertook with Prince Karl Lichnowsky, whom you may know as a patron of Ludwig van Beethoven. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was married to Constanze Weber for 10 years. It was a love marriage. Mozart was very much interested in having his wife with him all the time and so she joined him on most of the journeys he undertook during his Viennese years. This was not possible, however, in the spring of 1789, when Mozart traveled to Berlin with stops in Prague, Dresden and Leipzig. The main intention was to get an audience at the court of the Prussian King Frederick Wilhelm II, a great lover of music and himself a capable cello player. The letter we are able to present here is the second letter of the trip, written at the first major stop in Prague. Constanze knew Prague very well from her visits in the city related to performances of Le Nozze di Figaro in 1786 and Don Giovanni in 1787. Mozart starts his letter consequently by telling his wife which friends he visited, most importantly the keyboard player and composer Franz Xaver Duschek. Hopes to meet also his wife the famous singer Josefa Duschek, were not fulfilled because she had just left for a concert tour to Dresden. But Mozart did not only see private friends, it was a business trip. Mozart went to see the opera impresario Domenico Guardasoni, for whom he had composed the opera Don Giovanni, and proudly tells his wife that Guardasoni had almost definitively promised him a contract for a new opera to be produced in the fall. This project was, however, never realized. What makes this letter particularly charming is that this is a private letter, not a business letter, in the first place. We see that Mozart already after a few days dearly missed his wife and their young son Karl. Within six weeks, Mozart wrote no less than 12 letters to Constanze, begging her each time to write to him regularly and extensively exactly telling her to which post office she should address the next letter. By the way, during this trip also the last portrait of Mozart originated, the so-called silver point drawing by Dora Stock. It was drafted in Dresden just a week after our letter. While the silver point drawing, which I can show you today only as a facsimile, came into our possession already in 2005, the letter was acquired just a few weeks ago. At least the text of Mozart's letter has been known from a 19th century publication, based on a copy that Constanze had sent to the publisher Breitkopf and Tertel. Under fortunate circumstances, the Mozarteum Foundation was now able to acquire this letter. Although the Mozarteum Foundation is the most important repository of Mozart letters all over the world, it is actually the very first letter in our collection that Mozart wrote on a journey to his most beloved, best little wife, as Mozart's widow gave the letters away piecemeal to friends. Please join us and enjoy what Mozart wrote on 10 April 1789. Wolfgang Amade Mozart to his wife Constanze in Vienna, dated Prague on Good Friday, the 10th of April, 1789. Dearest, most treasured little wife, this afternoon at half past one, we arrived here safely. In the meantime, I hope you will surely have received my little letter from Budwitz. Now here is my account of Prague. We alighted at the unicorn. 
After being shaved, combed, and dressed, I drove out with the intention of dining at Canals, but since I had to go past Duchex, I inquired there first of all. I then learned that Madame had set off for Dresden yesterday, so I will meet her there. He dined at Lillibourne's, as I often had too. I therefore drove out to him directly. I had them call out Duchex's name as if someone had something to discuss with him. Now you can imagine the joy. So I dined at Lillibourne's. After the meal, I drove to Canal and Pacta, but found no one at home. So I went to Guarasone, who has said almost definitely that for the opera in the coming autumn, I will get 200 ducats and 50 ducats traveling expenses. Then I went home in order to write all of this down for my dear little wife. One more thing. Ram left here on his way home only a week ago. He came from Berlin and said that the king had asked him frequently and insistently if I was certain to come. And since I had not in fact come, he again said, I have fear he is not coming. Ram became most anxious. He attempted to assure him to the contrary. Judging by this, my business should go not too badly. Now I am driving the prince to Dushek's, where we are expected, and at nine o'clock in the evening, we are leaving for Dresden, where we will arrive tomorrow evening. My dearest little wife, I have such longing for news from you. Perhaps I will find a letter in Dresden. Oh God, make my wish come true. After receiving this letter, you must write to me in Leipzig, poste restante. Needless to say, adieu, love, I must close, otherwise the post will leave. Kiss our Carl a thousand times, kissing you with my whole heart. I am your eternally faithful W. A. Mozart, Manu Propria. P.S. All conceivable compliments to Herr and Frau von Puckberg. I have put off writing to them until Berlin, then they will have thanks in writing as well. Adieu, aimez moi et gardez votre santé, si chère et précieuse à votre épouse. Adieu, love me, and take care of your health, so dear and precious to your husband. <laughs> <laughs>